From the moment you arrive on this earth, people are making lifestyle decisions for you. On the day you're born, the nurses hand you to your parents and announce either it's a boy or it's a girl. If you're a boy, you're wrapped in a blue blanket. If you're a girl, it's pink. Now, these blankets, whose intention is really to keep your tiny new body warm, generally determine the rest of your life. Into the stitches of the blue blanket is sewn bravery, strength, dominance, and athleticism. The pink blanket is made of elegance, beauty, passion, and nurturing tendencies. Now, don't get me wrong, these characteristics aren't bad. Lots of people are perfectly fine living within their set characteristics. But let's say there's a boy who wants a couple pink stitches on his blanket, or a girl who wants blue polka dots on hers. What if you'd prefer purple or green? The sexism in our society has turned these blankets into straight jackets, keeping us confined in these little boxes that tell us how to act. So why do we live this way? To answer simply, tradition. That's how we've been doing it as long as we can remember. And for many, it's too much of a hassle to change how we act. But what if you want change? What if you're tired of hiding who you are and living your life by someone else's rules? Well, you might just need feminism. It seems to me as though feminism has become a bit of a bad word as there are so many misconceptions around it. The dictionary defines feminism as the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. So how come so many people, especially men, feel that feminists are these self-righteous women set on attaining superiority? I'd like to address a few of these reasons and also explain why men actually need feminism too. A lot of people are confused because it's called feminism. It can't be gender equality if only one gender is in the name. It's called feminism because females are currently the underprivileged gender. You obtain equality by promoting the rights of the underprivileged, hence why we call the gay rights movement what we do, not because gay people should have more rights than straight people, it's so we can all be brought up to the same level. We currently live in a patriarchal or male-dominated society. Our governments are predominantly male, men make, on average, more money than women, and in many countries, only boys have the right to an education. This is why masculine tendencies are more socially acceptable than feminine ones, often even when a female is displaying them. For example, if a girl likes watching sports and going to the bar and working out at the gym, she's seen as the cool one or one of the guys, as opposed to the peppy blonde cheerleader who wears lots of pink. If a boy displays feminine tendencies, he's ridiculed for not being a real man, called a variety of homosexual slurs, weak, or worse, a girl. Basically, being a man is an upgrade, and being a woman is a downgrade. Lots of guys feel that feminism is against men because it draws upon the inequalities that are due to a male-dominated society. Not all men are like that. Of course they aren't. But if your only response to a woman who tells you how she hates men because she was catcalled five times walking home is, well, I'm a nice guy, I would never do that, instead of offering her your sympathy or some advice, maybe you should look at what it really is you're trying to say. Some people, women included, feel that the patriarchy isn't real, or that because they aren't oppressed, they don't need feminism. The fact that these women are freely able to voice that opinion is a direct result of feminism. And saying that you're against feminism because you aren't oppressed is like saying that world hunger isn't an issue because you had lunch today. You may not feel oppressed, but your mother, who, who makes less money than her coworkers, your best friend, who is sexually assaulted and blamed for it, or a little girl in the Congo who was denied the right to an education, they may feel differently than you. Some people will refuse to support a cause if it does not benefit them specifically. This can be seen in the rise of meninism, a mock feminism supposedly set on focusing on men's rights. But these men's rights activists don't actually seem to be helping the men who are oppressed, transgender, gay, asexual, bisexual, or feminine men. They don't focus on the real issues that men face, such as unfair treatment in custody battles, domestic abuse, and sexual assault. All these meninists really seem to be concerned about with is harassing feminists over Twitter and getting mad at girls who won't date them. Boys need feminism because the same sexism that hurts women also hurts men. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, in this case, the action being sexism. Sexism hurts both men and women, but in almost opposite ways. In elementary school, the kids who poked fun at me and my friends for being bossy or arrogant made fun of the boys for being quiet and self-conscious. When a woman is sexually assaulted, she's blamed or asked what she was wearing, whereas when the same thing happens to a guy, he's told that he's lucky or probably enjoyed it. 
When boys and girls are little, they cry the same amount as each other. But when they hit around seven or eight, the boys are told to stop. They're told to suppress their emotions, push down their sadness, and man up. And they have a three times higher suicide rate than girls because of this. Feminism literally saves lives. It provides a safe place for women, people of color, people with disabilities, people in the LGBTQA community, and anyone who doesn't fit society's impossible standards. Feminism is not about who pays for the meal or who cooks the meal. It's about doing whichever task is best suited for you based on your personality, skill, or willingness, not on your gender. But it's also about not fearing change. If you're a girl and want to try out for the football team, then go for it. If you're a guy and think you look really good with painted nails, go right ahead. We shouldn't be stopping each other from trying things we may end up loving simply because of what society and sexism tell us. If you can take anything at all away from my talk, let it be this. Feminism is not men versus women or any gender versus another. It's all of us working together to overcome our lack of mutual understanding. So this isn't the 1960s, so please don't burn your bras, but I hope that you'll all join me in burning your blankets, metaphorically speaking only, of course, and announcing proudly that you are a feminist. Thank you.